In this video, you're going to learn how to apply the information about what the purpose of an ion and a molecule are, but this time you're going to learn how to write the chemical formula for a compound that has a transition metal. So when forming compounds with a transition metal, you first must know what a transition metal is. So transition metals are groups 3 through 12 on the periodic table. Remember, we've been writing the transition metals in the green color. So transition metals have a varying charge, more than one charge. That's what the word varying refers to. Some exceptions to these rules include zinc, which has a two plus charge, silver, which has a positive one charge, and cadmium, which has a plus two charge. So those three will never have another charge. They will never form a different amount of valence electrons. It'll always be two plus for zinc, one for silver, and then one for cadmium. And note that Transition metals are metals, so they all have positive charges. So these are the actual steps for writing the chemical formulas. They're pretty much the same as you would for a basic ionic compound. It is a little different because we have to distinguish that we have our transition metals. So step one when writing the formulas for compounds with transition metals, you write the symbol for the transition metal first, just like you would normally write the metal first. Then the symbol for the nonmetal or the polyatomic ion second. Then you're going to identify the charges of each transition metal and polyatomic ion. So for this, you're going to have to check your reference sheet unless you already have that information memorized in your head. So for the nonmetals, you must use the octet rule, the group number, the valence electron number is the same thing as the group number. So remember, groups 13 through 18, you have to take the group number, remove the one. That gives you the amount of valence electrons. Then you use the octet rule. You subtract 8, and that's going to give you your charge. So then you are going to check to make sure that your charges are balanced. If they're not, then you use step 3, the crisscross method, if not equal to 0. So that's when you're going to take the numerical amounts for each charge. You're going to switch them. So step four, then you're going to check for the math for a zero balance. So you want to make sure that the amount of atoms of each element balance out to zero with the amount of positive charges and the amount of negative charges. So we have our application. So problem one, you have Fe. Notice it's in green. All the rest of your problems are going to start with green because we're doing application with transition metals. So Fe, in this case, has a positive 2 charge. This is a polyatomic ion. This is magnate. So magnate includes manganese, which is also a polyatomic ion. It contains oxygen, which is a part of the oxygen family. Together, they have an overall charge of negative 1. So in a magnate, you have one manganese atom, you have four oxygen atoms, and they have an overall negative one charge. So positive two and negative one do not equal to zero, so you're going to switch the charges. So the magnate's charge is going to go to iron, and iron's charge of two is going to go to the magnate. You reduce to Fe1 bracket MnO4, close the bracket two. This bracket allows you to distinguish between the atoms of oxygen and the amount of all the magnate that you're going to need to balance out the one iron. So when you write the formula, you're going to have FeMnO42. So problem two, you have copper, positive two charge. You have sulfate, polyatomic ion, sulfur, oxygen, both in the same family, so they're both pink. You have four atoms of oxygen. Together, they have an overall charge of negative two. Positive two plus a negative two does equal to zero, so you just reduce. Copper has one atom. You open your bracket. You have one atom of sulfur. One, I'm sorry, four atoms of oxygen. You close your bracket. But you only need one of the entire sulfate to bounce out one atom of copper. So when you write your formula, CuSO4. Problem three, you have another transition metal. This time, this is gold. It has a positive one charge. You have F, which is a part of the halogen family, which is why it's brown. This is fluorine. Gold has a positive one charge. Fluorine has a negative one charge. Remember, if you don't see numbers here, they're understood to be one. So positive one plus negative one does equal to zero. 
AU1, F1 is what it reduces to when you write the formula, AUF. Number four, you have zinc. Remember, zinc is one of the exceptions. It always has a positive two charge. Iodine is also part of the halogen family, so it's brown in here. And zinc has a positive two charge. Iodine has a negative one charge. Remember, when you're getting the charges of the F and the I, they're in group 17, you remove the one. Seven minus eight gives you a negative one charge. So negative one does not balance with positive two, so you switch the charges. So the negative one, or the one specifically, is going to travel to the zinc. And the 2 is going to switch with the iodine. So then you get ZN1I2, which reduces to ZNI2. So now you need to flip over the backup worksheet 3 and practice this application with your transition metals. Good luck.